Mr. President, dear colleagues, today is a happy day. We celebrate our 20th anniversary. And with normal people, this is a moment where you reach an age that you can drive a car, drink alcohol, get married, you are allowed to vote, and you're allowed to make contracts. So we come to a stage that we really can fill in our freedom and our responsibility as a young adult. As a young adult in the, well, combination of European institutes. And with age comes wisdom, and with age comes responsibility, and with age comes effectiveness. So ladies and gentlemen, when the Committee of the Regions was created in 94 by the Treaty of Maastricht as a long result, now as a result of long efforts to take into account local and regional actors in the decision making, very few people thought and foresee financial and social economic difficult times coming. We all were very enthusiastic and very looking forward to a promising Europe, and look where we are now. So 20 years later, many citizens feel that the European Union is, European Union is far away, that responses to the difficult situation is not adequate enough, and that the European Union is not always defending their interests. We are indeed in a difficult situation in producing results for our people. And even though it has become a body that counts within the European Union institutions, the visibility of our committee is still limited. And more importantly, those who know that a committee is important do not understand the fundamental democratic rights of this body. I'd like to remind you that the committee is a body that defends the interests of the grassroots in this Brussels bubble. It's a political assembly that is the voice of regional and local tiers of governments in Europe. We are responsible for the places where economy is developed, where jobs are created, and where social cohesion is founded. A big responsibility to the European people. The Lisbon Treaty has given the committee more powers. We can appeal to the European Court of Justice in the case of breach of the principle of subsidiarity. In the last years, the committee has been reformed, transformed, and the allocation of resources is focusing more on the preparation and impact of our opinions. That's a very good development. And our cooperation with the Commission, the Council and the Parliament has been enhanced. Nevertheless, our committee remains fragile if we do not deliver on our core business, which is our consultative work and being the true guardians of the subsidiarity principle. That's why I'd like to suggest the following. First, the Committee of the Regions needs to allocate more resources to the drafting and follow-up of the opinions. We alone, we alone can guarantee the impact of our opinions. No one else will. And for us to be stronger, we need to show key institutional partners that our opinions are of added value. Secondly, we as members of the Committee of the Regions have a responsibility in telling the good and true stories about the European Union. We have to be the ambassadors of the Union in our regions and cities and vice versa. Thirdly, in the ongoing debate about the future of our committee, due to the important role of cities, as I stated in my report earlier this afternoon, it would be worthwhile to think about adding the word cities to the Committee of the Region so that it reads Committee of the Regions and Cities, giving it a broader approach and a higher appeal. Finally, on behalf of the ALDE Group, I would like to express my disappointment about the gain of seats by Eurosceptics following the last European Parliament elections. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our, it's our collective responsibility 
to keep the European approach, maybe in new forms and focus, but to keep the approach alive. If we don't, the people and history will hold us accountable for failure in these days. So now is the time to produce results. Good luck, everybody. Thank you.